Today we're going to be having a look at functions. Yoo okay, what are they? What do they do? What's their purpose? So first, what I want you to do is I just want you to take a number and put it in your head. So let's say a number between one and five. So you've got two, three or four. And uh, you're going to take that number. And what I want you to do is I want you to multiply whatever that number is by three. So one of your choices here, multiply it by three. And then after you've done that, I'd like you to add uh, two. So if you picked the number two, and multiply it by three, you get six. And then add two, you would have gotten eight. If you picked three, you'd say three by three is nine plus two, you would have gotten 11. And if you said four by three, that's 12. 12 plus two is 14. So what you can see here is we had an input of numbers and we had an output. And we performed something on them. We multiplied by three and then we added two. We performed a function. So the, the function of this particular thing here was to take a number, multiply it by three and add two. If you input the number two, you get the number eight. If you input the number three, you get the number 11. If you input the number four, you get the number 14. Now, a little bit more terminology. This is our inputs. We refer to these generally as X. These are our outputs. And we refer to these guys as Y. Okay, with the same idea where we multiply a number by three and we add two. What would you get if I were to pick the number five? So you're going to input five. What number would you get for your output? All right. Often you'll see in the book, this is thought of as a, an input or a function machine. So where you have a machine and its job is to do something. So for example, I'm just going to change this one up. I'm going to say whatever happens in here in the function machine, we're going to square the number and then we're going to subtract uh, one. So we're going to take our number x, that's our input, and we're going to put it in and get out our y. In here though, what is this function written in mathematical terms. So what would it look like if you were to square the number coming in, square the x, and then subtract one? It should look something like x squared minus one. Brilliant. Now, last time I gave us the numbers going in, it was two, three, four. This time I'm just gonna say, what happens if we wanted to know what it would be if I put in 10? So I'd say 10 squared and then minus one, what would that be? Cool, so how do I write that? Okay, and we need to look a bit here at terminology um, and to just how to write functions. And there's a few different ways. So first we can say y equals, our output equals our input squared minus one. That would be one way to write the function. Output equals x squared minus one. Another way to write it, which is the exact same uh, but just written slightly differently, is f of x equals x squared minus 1. And you'll notice I've just replaced the y with f of x. Now, that means the function of x. So the reason why we do this will become a bit clearer later. I'll just show you one last way that it can be written in some of your textbooks, is like this. So this means the mapping of of x is this. This is something that we'll come back to at another stage, not really a big deal. It just is another way of saying the same thing. Uh, the most common one we'll use is probably the second one. And just on that, to see it, I could have, instead of saying f of x, I could have said h of x. I could have said g of x. Uh, so on and so forth. It doesn't really matter the letter in front. That's just identifying which function it is. We generally go for F and actually G and H as well. 